Okay, so when you'd first walk up to calibrate a differential pressure transducer that's in the field, uh, first what you would do is you'd want to remove the cover, and then this gives you access to the electrical connections and the pneumatic connections are already present without taking off the cover. You're going to have the electrical cable as well as the pneumatic tubing that you'll be able to interface with the micro cow with. So first we're going to hook up the electrical connection to the transducer. And then we're going to hook up the pneumatic tubing to the pressure ports on the transducer. Then here you can see the different pneumatic connections as well as the electrical connections. There's a high and a low pressure port as well as the electrical connections that allow you to connect with a milliamp output transducer, so in this case a two-wire system. And then there's the also the other two ports that allow for you to use a three-wire or four-wire uh, voltage connection. So here we're going to hook up the electrical connections to electrical ports here as well as the pneumatic tubing to the pneumatic connections here. On the left side, there's the power on, and we'll wait for the Sutra MicroCal to ramp up. While this is ramping up, on the right side, you have the connection for the reference modules that are modules, so you can take those out and uh, replace them with the other reference ranges that you might need. as well as the removable battery here. Okay, so now that it's ramped up, you'll see here we are at the real-time screen. This gives you a reading of the pressure that the microcal is currently generating, the output that it's receiving from the transducer, as well as the corresponding output after checking that output with the actual reference modules that are built in on board. Here you'll see that you have the manual set point, so this allows you to manually set a pressure that's going to apply to the transducer and read what the output is. It's going to have the button for control, so this is when it's in control mode, you're able to actually generate a pressure and control at that pressure. The monitor button allows you to just be able to see what the microcal is reading uh, from the pressure ports on the end. The tear does an electrical zero of the reference modules. The hold basically holds the pressure generating system inside the unit so that way it's no longer controlling, it's just currently holding at the actual pressure that it's at. And vent does a pneumatic purge of any air that might be built up in the system. Here you'll see the actual UUT or the user, uh, the unit under test that you're actually um, pulling the profile from, which I'll show you next. So clicking here on the UUT setup tab, this is basically going to be where you set up the actual profile for um, the unit that you're actually testing. So here we have already pulled over the part number from the transducer, so this 267 model. Next is the actual test profile, which we'll configure next. We've inputted the serial number, the accuracy, the excitation voltage that we're using to power the unit from the microcal. Uh, the low and high inputs for the pressure range that the units scale to read, as well as the low and high outputs that those uh, electrical signal is scaled for those pressures. Up top here, the UUT type for this one is a current device. So it's a current output. It's going to be a 4 to 20 milliamp output. You also have the option for a 3-wire or 4-wire, which would be actually voltage outputs, or a dial gauge or a pressure switch. For this one, we'll again leave it at the current output. Page two of two, this allows you to input some additional information for the unit. Uh, the first will be the part number, next is the model number, the manufacturer, and then next we get to the settling time and control stability. When the unit goes through and does its automated test, it's basically going to take this control stability and say that the unit has to be within plus or minus, in this case 0 0.0003 inches of water column, for 5,000 milliseconds before the unit is going to deem stable and it can move on to the next point. The system volume is the volume of air from these ports outwards. So if you have tubing that's longer than this, uh, you can then calculate what the internal volume is and um, bump up that number right there. For here, we'll leave it at 64 cubic inches. 
Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump over to the test setup. This is actually where you're going to set up how the unit's going to um, go through the different points it's gonna test. So you have the ability to set that. Let's change this over to an 11 point test that's already configured. You're gonna choose the number of points and then you're gonna choose a profile type. The options here are ascending, descending, both are custom. Ascending will start at the lowest pressure point that's scaled for the UUT that you're going to select. Um, it's then going to ramp up to the highest pressure point that you um, selected. Descending will be the opposite. It'll start at the highest point and go down. Both will check for hysteresis. So what it will do is it will start low. By the middle point, it will have reached the top. And then for the second half of the points, it will then come down to see how the output's changing when you're approaching from different directions. And then custom allows you to actually set very specific pressures for different points in case there's a very specific pressure point that you're typically at and you want to confirm that that's reading the output that you would like. We'll leave this at ascending, jump back to the UUT setup tab, and we'll choose the 11 point test, which is the test we were just reviewing. And now we'll actually go to run test. So this is now going to pull that UUT profile that we had reviewed earlier, the 11 point test that we reviewed, as found and as left, radio buttons are right there. So what you'll be able to do is you decide whether or not uh, this is the as found data or the as left. The as found will be when you approach the unit initially, you wanna take exactly what the unit is before making any adjustments. The as left will be once you've taken the as found data, if you need to make any adjustments, uh, you'll then do the as left to make sure you know exactly what the unit's reading for outputs uh, when you leave the unit. Again, we'll start with the as found. We'll hit the tear button. Again, this will do uh, a combination of homing the stepper motor that's inside that's actually generating the pressure, as well as um, doing an electrical zero of the reference modules that you'll be using. Once that's complete, you will then hit run. The unit will then again step through all of those different points, giving you what the pressure is it's generating, the actual output from the transducer, as well as the corresponding error, and whether or not that's a pass or fail by calculated from the UUT profile for the accuracy. Okay, now that the unit has completed running all the different points, it'll come up, say test complete, test complete, unit passed. You can hit okay. And now here you'll be able to actually review the different uh, data points that it took. As you can see here, they're with a plus or minus 1% full span accuracy. There are some points that are getting close to that 1%. Um, so before running the as left data, that's something that we'd want to go back and make that adjustment that we talked about previously. So what we'll do is we'll click save test results. And we'll jump back to the real time screen. From here, we'll hit the vent to again do the pneumatic purge of any air that might be built up in the system as well as the tear. So now we're actually reading what the zero pressure point is. So coming over here with a potentiometer, we will adjust this zero until this number gets right down to as close to zero as possible. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to hit the manual set point. We're going to go up to the full scale pressure. And once the pressure reading turns green, which means that the unit is stable, um, we will then be able to adjust the span potentiometer. Okay, that should be good. Now we'll, we will jump back to the run test. We'll make sure the UUT is the proper UUT. The test profile is the proper test profile. We will select as left. We will click tear. And run. All right, so the unit passed again. As you can see here, we were able to lower those output error numbers. If this is uh, sufficient for where you'd like it to be, you can hit save test results and you are all set and good to go.